Postgres version 12 has been released and version 9.4 is approaching the end of its life very 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 soon let's go through the features that i think are most interesting in postgres version 12. <laughs> So Postgres version 12 has been released, I would imagine maybe late November or, or mid November last year, 2019. And I know it's been a while, but I wanna go through uh, the features that I think that are very interesting in this technology. So, and obviously there are a lot of features guys. So I'm gonna go through the things that I personally think are noteworthy. So how about that we go through that, okay. So it's gonna be a little bit of a long video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, so the first one I wanna talk about is covering indexes for generalized search tree indexes, right? Or just indexes. So this is the ability where you can actually, if you go hover, I'm gonna have the links, by the way, guys, in the description below for the feature mat matrix here. And I just modified the versions to show the version 10, 11, and 12, because this is the most relevant versions. And you can see that these are, this is the new features. Anything that is green and these are red, that means it's, it's recently supported in version 12. So the first feature is allow additional columns to be included as none key to adjust index. So this is the ability to to have essentially a composite index, which is a very cool thing to do, right? Let's say, assume you have an index, right? And then <clears throat> after you built your application, you notice that the pattern is actually querying uh, this field plus another constant, consistently you're pulling information, right? From another column. So it's my, sometimes it's useful to add these two columns as one composite index. This way, essentially, uh, speed up your query and the retrieval time. So it essentially results in an index-only query. I don't even need to hit the table to pull up the data, which is can be powerful, right? So I think this is uh, sometimes it's useful, right, to think about if you think about some applications where you can add an index after the fact. So it's a powerful feature. So the second interesting feature in version Postgres 12 is the ability to do copy from, not just copy from, add a where clause, which is awesome. So copy from is a syntax, I think this is a SQL 92 syntax, but where you can actually copy data from a table or even a desk, a file, a desk, into a table, right? But the before version 12, you can only do a copy from. That means the entire table will be pulled, right? And put in, inside your, essentially your new table, right? Copy from where can essentially add a where clause. It's, hey, let me copy the entire thing, but I'm only interested in columns where blah is greater than blah, right? So you can add a where. So this, I, I find this feature is very, very valuable for data migration, actually, essentially. I believe it will be very useful. All right, what do you guys think? All right, guys, as as I go through the video, let me let me let me know your opinion. What do you think about these features, or if something I I might have missed? Right. All right. So another interesting feature and and very hard I think to implement. <laughs> I I would imagine this this feature has caused a lot of bugs to the Postgres teams. I might be wrong though, but Reindex concurrently. So, why would you ever need to reindex a column that has an index, right? The one case is you might you you have essentially and and you know Postgres is is infamous of essentially not cleaning up deleted entries, right? It's always used this vacuum cap, uh, capability, right? We'll, we'll, it will auto vacuum things that are essentially 
uh, vacant, right? So you would you will end up with these gaps on your index. You'll end up with these gaps on your tables, okay? And uh, sometimes you you even get case into cases where your index can be corrupt, right? And uh, when you do that, you will have sometimes to re-index to gain the efficiency and the performance that you need. All right, so that's why we would you want to reindex. That's the first thing. So reindexing has has had has been always there, right? In all in all releases. But the problem with reindexing is, well, I'm touching your table, right? I have to uh, reshuffle the table. I have to update certain entries. So what Postgres does is like, hey, if you want to reindex, I'm sorry, I'm gonna lock the entire table. You cannot do any edits. You can read, feel free to read, but you cannot edit, okay? And that obviously cannot be, uh, it's, it's not acceptable in a production environment, right? You cannot stop me from editing just to index your stuff. I mean, it depends how many rows you have in your table, right, obviously, and how long it's gonna take. I imagine it's gonna take a little longer, obviously, duh, the, the more rows you have, but, the feature here says, okay, we're going to allow you to re-index your column and allow writes at the same time, which is very, very attractive feature, especially in a production environment for, for a heavily, uh, what's the word? Volatile table. I don't think that's the, the right word, but it's a very heavily edited table. If you have a very heavy, heavily edited table, you might want to upgrade to Postgres 12 to take advantage of the re-index concurrently. Is this free? No, sir. Nothing is free. Re-indexing concurrently, right, while allowing the writes will slow down the, uh, the indexing itself. So the re-indexing will take longer, but I do not believe this will affect the rights. I might be wrong there. I couldn't find a statement that actually said that, hey, it couldn't be, uh, that the rights will not be affected. I would believe, no, that would be bad. But definitely the re-indexing will take longer, but who cares if it's gonna finish, eventually it's gonna finish, right? But think about it, you, will get, you can get into a state where you will almost never re-index it completely because you'll always have rights, right? So so if you're re-indexing and picking up your entries, then it will be essentially picking up the rights as if you re-index fast enough to pick up all the rights, then you will essentially get it to a consistent state, right? Plus, you're not gonna obviously re-index everything. You're gonna re-index only the things that need to be re-indexed. I might be wrong there. All right, another feature that is, I was really puzzled by. I don't, I couldn't think of a use case for really. Stored generated columns. So these are columns that you can essentially derive column where you can create a column and this column is, is, is never persisted in its own. Probably you cannot even update it but it's always a derived value of other columns. So you can, maybe it's a, it's a sum of two columns, right? And, and a, another canonical example is, is the date of birth, right? And the age. So age is essentially a stored generated column. So you can store it so you don't have to recalculate it every time. I don't think that is true, but so it's the, the term says like, okay, let, let's read more about this actually. I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested about that. Okay, so it's, it's a, it has its own thing, right? So a, a generated column is a special column that is always computed from other columns. So that's, that's it. So it's called a generated column, right? But it is called a stored generated column. So that's what confused me, the word stored. It's almost like, well, computing it and storing it. Well, so let's think about it, yeah. So. All right, so this is actually interesting. So it's not only always generated on the fly, it's actually stored. And when it is stored, if you're storing the value that is derived from other tables, right? 
let's say this is the new uh, field, if you're deriving this, computationally deriving it, and you're storing it, that means every time you edit these two fields, you have to kind of dirty up that column or even recalculate it based on, on, on the edit of these fields. So I don't know what's the implementation exactly, Right, you can think of many implementation. It could be like when you pull up this generated column, it will compute on the fly. I think that's a little bit expensive. Or you can sacrifice writes and calculate the generated columns on the right. And it's a pure, I think, subjective design activity that you can think about it. Do I want to uh, uh, sacrifice my reads or do I want to sacrifice my writes? Where is the slowness here? Okay. To me, I think it's absolutely not really required. I don't see a value of it. You can you can always generate it on on the on the client side, but that means all the clients that read this stuff need to learn how to compute these columns, which could be annoying writing all these clients. So pushing this on the server can have its benefits. Yeah, let me know if there's a use case for this, guys. The age of dirt of birth is definitely, I think, a good idea, right? Instead of computing it on the client side. And the last feature that I think is very, very interesting is accelerated partitioning pruning, which, in a nutshell, for tables that have a lot, a lot of partitions. This, you're talking about billions, billions of rows right here, guys. And uh, apparently version 11 and before had poor performance when it comes to reading queries that spans multiple partitions, right? He's, he's talking about thousands of partitions here, right? When the only limited subset is partition is needed to be accessed, right? So when your query is actually touching multiple partition, which is essentially tells me there's a big question mark on, on the design of the partitioning, right? Why would you design your table and partition it on a key that end up and your query end up spanning multiple partitions, right? That's just a big question mark. Maybe sometimes, I, I speak from a high level, but when you go to production, and I've been there, if you go to production, you can't really, sometimes you cannot control everything, right? It's just the way it is. That's why microservices, especially if, if you have like one database, one database and, and, and there are a lot of clients and, and just making a small change will essentially affect so many other clients and you have to teach everybody. So you cannot essentially build a generic application for everything. So that's why microservices, right, despite its disadvantages and, 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 and difficulties really, can be very, 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 I'm gonna stop, <laughs> very, very advantageous when it comes to polyglot applications, right? Where where I am a team of 12 people. I think 12 people is a, is a pizza team table or two, two, two pizza team tables. Yeah, that's right, right? If I am a team with 12 people, right? You can choose pretty much any database you want. We don't care. You're a service that provides, I don't know, comments right on instagram for example right you're only responsible for the comments so if we want a comment for a given picture or we want the latest top comment top liked comment you gave it us and you you better give it us give us give it up give us it my god english is hard okay you better give it to us woo as fast as possible, okay? And I don't care where you store it, Postgres, freaking LevelDB, RocksDB, you can do anything you want, right? We, we're gonna talk to your API and you're gonna use probably, this is what we need to agree on, protocol, gRPC maybe, or REST, or, 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 or GraphQL, but that's it. But behind that, you can use anything you want, buddy. We don't really care, okay? And that's when it comes really, 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 really interesting, right, guys? 
Yeah. So so that that freedom essentially gives you full control of your database. So you can just scrap your database, change it for God's sake. You can do anything you want, right? And this is where it comes back to the partitioning, right? In a production environment, in a microservices, you have the ability to control. You will never run into this. You'll never need this feature if you designed your queries so that it hits one partition and, and one partition only. Again, I might be speaking of very generically here there might be a use case where you absolutely need to hit multiple partitions so the bug here that was the feature is that queries that span multiple partitions were extremely slow because i think they were hitting all partitions accidentally right so you you feel the hit right so this essentially the 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 the, the optimization here essentially came like hey if we're gonna hit the bottom of the prayer, we're gonna be smart about that and fix that but all right guys so that was the software news of the day hope you enjoyed this give it a like share it with your friends and i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome